Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dermot again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. Today I'm going to continue the videos on AR Foundation. I'm going to be showing you a new feature which is specific to AR Kit, which is called the AR World Map. We're going to be using this feature to be able to save trackables to the disk and also to reload those trackables from the disk. I can also save planes as we do plane detection. So I'm going to show you what's playing behind the scenes, which is a demo that I created with the help of Unity and Unity provided the component that I'm going to be showing you in this video. So let's jump into Unity and start looking at it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we need to do. So right now I have something called the AR World Map Manager, and I ended up renaming it because it's going to, I just like to use the, the word manager, but the original one comes from the Unity Technologies AR Foundation samples. This is a reference script that I'm going to be using. I'm just going to rename the name of the class, but I want to give them credit because they're the ones that provided us with the example. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just copy this and I'm going to show you how we can implement it into our own project. So let me jump back into my project. I'm going to double click on Unity here on the actual manager. And we're going to be just focusing on this script. It's just going to be just pasting that implementation and we're just going to be making a couple of changes. And I'm going to be showing you what we need to do on the inspector to make it work. So this is again credited to Unity because they're the ones who created it. I just renaming the class and I'm going to put this in the repo that I that I have because it's going to it's going to do more than what they provided. So this is going to be just a starting point. So so right now this is you know it has everything that they provide. I'm going to show you how this looks on the on the Unity and what we need to do after you do that. So I'm going to go back into Unity, wait until it compiles and once it compiles, we can add a new component here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on create new game object. I'm just going to call it AR World Map Manager. It's going to be the same name as this script. And we're going to drag it and drop it here or just click on a component. It's going to require that we associate a couple of components in here. We're going to need the AR session because this implementation is going to be resetting the session. And the reason for that is because you want to make sure that if we reset the session, we can reload the map, which may, which means that I'm going to be reloading the planes. We're going to be reloading the trackables. And that's the beauty about this is going to be reloading the state of the trackables at the point that you saved it and also any planes that you had. So the other things are just going to be for information. We're going to need a error text. We're also going to need a log text and also mapping status text and then just a couple of buttons. So that's going to be fairly simple to do. So we're just going to go ahead and create a canvas. So we're going to go ahead and look for the UI, look for the canvas here. I'm going to go into 2D. And I don't think I have set this project to be iOS. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on build settings. And just so you know, this is only available on iOS, the AR World Map Manager. The actual AR World Map implementations is an implementation that iOS has. Right now, I don't know if AR Core is going to do that at some point, but for now, that's what we're going to have. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add this scene, which is going to be just the example scene. I'm also going to be switching the platform to iOS. So let's go ahead and click on Switch Platform. It's going to take a couple of seconds. And while that is happening, let's go ahead and go into the code and just look at a couple of things that, that they have. It's going to move this on the side. And hopefully I can. Let's just go ahead and put it right there. So. So some of the things that you're going to have is, of course, going to be some of the namespaces that we're going to need. This is specifically for ARKit, so that's why they are bringing ARKit. We also need to look at the documentation for, and this is just something that I think it will be helpful for you to know. Just go into the Apple documentation. They have some more additional information that what this script, prov this script provides, so just make sure you look at that. And then just a couple of references in here, the AR session, because we're going to need to reset it. Also a property for that, also a text so that we can display any errors, a property for that, the a property for the for the actual log that they are displaying. Well, this is actually a field and then here's a property. Also a field for the, the mapping status text and also a property. So this is just, you know, different options that they have so that we can basically go through the workflow of creating a world, a, an AR world map and also restoring an AR world map. So some of the things in here that are really important for you to know, this method right here is going to be executed, you know, on the on the actual say when you click on the when you touch the say button, we're gonna be starting a core routine. It's gonna call this method, and the same thing with the load. It's gonna it's gonna call this method. It's gonna call that method through a core routine. 
So let's go ahead and look at that code. It's, it's actually far, fairly straightforward. So looks like what they do right now is they get an ARKit session subsystem based on the the current AR session subsystem. So the reason for that is because they want to make sure that the the subsystem that you're trying to access is an ARK subsystem. Otherwise, this is not going to be supported, which is what this means right here. This is not available, so it's not going to be it's not going to allow us to save it. Then the next thing that, that they do is just they try to get an AR world map because we're trying to save it. They're going to check to see, OK, do I need to do I have that available? And if I do have it available, it's going to do a request, and if I don't have any errors, it's going to keep going. It's going to get a world map, and it's going to try to basically save that world map because this is on the save. So it's going to try to get it. If it is there, it's going to you know it's going to go ahead and overwrite it. Also, the onload method it's going to do something similar, except that it's going to check for the AR subsystem as well, the error key subsystem, just to make sure that you have that. It's going to open that file. So that file is going to be, and I can show you where that is right now. Let's go ahead and search for that here. It's going to save it as a world map file. And let me, I think it's called, yep. And that's going to be on this property right here that they have. It's going to use the path combine. It's going to save it on the application, that persistent data path. And this is going to be the file name that gets saved into that location. So this is just convention. It's going to be a world map. Just know that anything that you save, it's in this case, it's just going to be the trackables. That doesn't mean like if you have a prefab on the scene, that prefab is going to be saved. That's going to be another video that I'm going to be creating. We're going to have to create another serialized file that is going to be mapping the trackable objects that we are saving here to the actual trackable objects that we save with our prefabs, meaning that we're going to have to st store some metadata about the prefabs that are going to be mapping to the trackables. That way, when we restore all the trackables, we also can restore the objects that we have in the scene. So. For now, this is going to be very bare bones, but we're going to be adding more to that. So let's go ahead and look at the, the implementation for the load that we that we have here. So same thing that we did above. We're just looking for the ARK, ARKit session subsystem. We also try to open that file. If the file doesn't exist, that means that we don't really have anything to load. So we're going to break. But if, we, if the file exists, that means that we save a world map already. So we're going to try to read it. That's basically what this code is doing. If we, if we can read the information, then we're going to be creating a native array. This is going to pull the data from that file. And once it pulls the data from that file, it's going to try to load it and apply it to a subsystem. So there's a lot of things that are happening in here that we don't see that are happening on the subsystem. All we're doing in here, we're just going to be getting a world map. That's what this is. That is a store in the file system. Once it's stored in the file system, we're stored into a variable. We're going to be applying that to the session subsystem. So no that this is the method that's going to do that. This is what's going to be restoring all the trackables in all the planes that you previously saved in the scene. So that's the thing that you saw in the in the beginning of the video. So now let's get this going. I'm going to go back into Unity. And we're going to need, looks like we have everything switched. So I, just, I can just go ahead and close this. The reason why I did that is because I want to make sure that I have the, the, proper, the proper size for the UI. Select it, and in my case, I have an iPhone XS, so I'm just gonna do select that. That way, we can just size everything properly, and you guys can download it and just play it, you know, and, and everything is gonna look good. So, what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna click on this AR World Map Manager. We're gonna need a couple of these variables. So, we're gonna need the buttons as well. Let's go ahead and start with the buttons. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the UI, and we're gonna be adding a couple of buttons. It's going to use the default buttons that Unity has already. And let me make sure that, so this is going to be very tiny. Let's go ahead and resize it. We can probably just do, and this is one of the things that I don't like about the buttons for Unity is they don't, well, in this case, they're going to look OK. I just like the ones that uh, the text mesh pro provides, but that's a different conversation. So we can just leave these. Let's go ahead and do that. I think if I do just 320 here. And then 60, we can just resize, resize it that way. Or what I'm going to do, we'll just resize this one for now. And that's probably going to be giant, but but that's OK. Let's go ahead and, and make sure that I have my, OK, there is a UI. just want to make sure that I can see the UI. This button is giant. Let's go ahead and do 333. Three, three. And there we go. Yeah, I think we can, use, we can use that side. So this one is going to be the save button. I'm just going to do that. And then we're also going to be changing the text. I can just say Save Button. 
And we can just save something more, you know, friendly. We can just say save world map. I think that makes more sense. And then we can also do another one for the load, load button. This one is also going to be similar, except it's going to be load here. And there we go. And then the other thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to snap these ones on the, it's going to look different than the demo because the demo that I showed you was the Unity demo, not the actual demo that you saw. And I'm going to just go ahead and enable Gizmos because that was driving me crazy. And we can probably just do something like, something like, I'm going to leave a gap because the, the iPhone XS has a, a rounded corner. So we want to make sure that we have that size properly and that everything is going to fit well. So we can just put these right here. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just going to do that. And this is not a video about UI, so we don't need to really worry about making this perfect. I do want it to look OK because you're going to have to you're going to have to use it. So so we can actually let's go ahead and put it on the side here and I'm going to snap it to the right. We can just do let's go ahead and use a negative number there. We have the same spacing on both. And I think that everything there looks fine. So now what I want to do is I need to bind these events to the events that we have on the actual script. So I'm just going to just bind to the onclick event here. I'm going to grab the, the actual AR world map manager script. And we're going to look for the implementation here. And this is going to be for the save. So we should say, you know, we have the on save, we have the on reset, and also the on load. So I'm just going to map that to the, to the on save. And then on this one, on the load, I'm just going to add it to the other method, which is going to be the on load. I'm just going to map that method here and then on load. We're going to need another button for resetting. So we can just move that one here. This one can be just the reset session. We can just do that piece here. And this is going to be just, we can just say AR session reset. I think that's explainable there. And then I'm going to do the same thing that we did on the other ones, except I'm not going to map it to this method. I'm going to map it to the on reset button method. And I think that looks fine. And then we're going to need a couple more things. But for now, let's go ahead and bind this. I'm just going to bind the save button here. I'm also going to be binding the load. And we're also going to be binding. I don't see the, the reset one for some reason here. And I don't know. Let's go ahead and look at the code and see how that happens. So I'm just going to say on reset button. OK, so the on reset button gets mapped to the to the AR session. And OK, so so the reason why we don't need to actually need to do some mapping, but we don't need to do the we don't need to add the button. Looks like we have the save button here. We also have the load button and they don't have a binding to the other button because we don't really need to do much with it. All we need to do is just, you know, execute, execute that method. So this is already bound to that method. So we're OK. We don't need to do anything else. And then the other things that we need to do, let's go ahead and go back here. We're going to need to add some log text. We can just go ahead and add a UI here. And it can just be a little text. And we're just going to be cloning and reusing this. It's going to be for our log here. It's going to be resizing this. And again, I, I'd rather use Text Mesh Pro, but for this for this video, it's fine. And then I'm just gonna say log area here. I like to put placeholder so that I can see that it's working. And I'm gonna make it Y. And let's go ahead and increment the text. We can just do something like that. And then I'm just gonna change the the pivot point, the anchor points. I think that's what they call it. Yep, that's what they that's what Unity calls it. And then we should be. I think we should be fine now. Log area. Go ahead and change this size a little bit more. Probably 30. Let me just do 30 or 32 so that we can see it better. All right, so we have that. This one is going to be the log. We can just call it log area. I think it's fine. And then we can just drag it and drop it to the log text. And we're going to need some error text as well. And it's going to put that here. We can just resize this. It's going to be the. This is going to be a lot of a lot of text, but that's fine. Just when we have errors, we're going to see that error area. And this one we can just make red so that we know that we have an error. And I think that's fine there. And it's also going to pivot it to the bottom. That's fine. And let's go ahead and call these error area. And we can go back in here and just map it to the error. And the last one is going to be the mapping status. So we're just going to move that one up. I think Unity had it on the very top. You can probably just match 
the size here on the let's go to map the ones on the bottom I think that's fine so this one is gonna be the mapping text area let's go ahead and add mapping let's we'll just call it mapping area to be consistent and we can just say mapping area and let's go ahead and go back in there and then just add it here and this one we can just call just do a different color we can just probably just do just look, look like a yellow so just know if these ones are not populated it's because there's really no errors so or we can just delete the text I mean it's really up to you this is just a demo you can you can change it if you like I'm gonna be checking that in the the last thing that I want to do just to make sure make sure every, we have everything mapped looks like we do is I'm gonna rename these let's go ahead and call this one default AR world map this is gonna be the most simplistic implementation then like I said in, in future videos we can do add some more objects and then save those objects and restore those objects and then the last thing that I'm gonna do is let's make sure that this is okay I'm gonna go into player settings because you're gonna need to do this anyways I show these on different videos but make sure that you do this otherwise it's not gonna work we're gonna need to populate the camera usage description so this is gonna be for for AR demo it doesn't matter what we put in there we just need to populate it and then I think that's everything we're gonna need the minimum so it's gonna be the device SDK and we're gonna need 11 I think is the minimum if I'm mistaken with the 11 just let me know but I know that we need to make sure that that is you know it has the right version I'm gonna try to build it and if we get any errors I, I will know what the error is and this needs to be arm 64 that I know for sure and I think we got everything that we need there and the last thing that I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and go into build settings and let's try to build it if we get any errors we'll fix it and then you'll know exactly what you need to do and I'm gonna do I already built one but this one is gonna be different because it's a new demo I just call and it's gonna call it demo and then build it and then I'm just gonna I'll just continue on as soon as it's done you know as soon as it's done building just to make sure that everything works all right guys so looks at like this finished building let's go ahead and let me go into that project and I'm gonna show you what we need to do in the actual project to make sure that everything is gonna run I'm gonna go ahead and open it up here in just a second and make sure that you have your device connected so it shows my device right now but I know that I need to have a signing a signing profile so I'm just gonna go ahead and sign in capabilities and then make sure that I assign a team and if everything works I can just hit play and I know that everything is going to work because I've done this many times. But if you guys have any questions about anything that I show you, please let me know in the comments. Thank you, guys. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting videos and also early access source code like the one that you see in this video and also additional information for what I do behind the scenes. Thank you very much, guys.